Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. And thank you for joining us for this podcast brought to you by the Global Health Press. We will bring you the latest news on infectious diseases, vaccines, and vaccinations with a special focus on the Republic of the Philippines. I am Januari Pardo, and with me today is a very special guest to discuss about dengue and our country's battle with uh, dengue control. He is a professor of medicine and infectious disease, and as well as the director of the Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology at the National Institutes of Health at the University of the Philippines. He was awarded the Senior Fed Fellowship for his work in restoring vaccine confidence and improving communications. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Edsel Salvani. Welcome, sir. Hi. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, I guess, uh, to everyone who is watching and listening to this podcast. It's really a pleasure to be here, and it's nice to be able to talk about dengue, which is really a big problem in our country. Okay, thank you for giving us the time. So in your opinion, sir, how would you assess the current dengue situation in our country? Well, it seems like the dengue situation right now is on the upswing. Uh, the worst uh, year that we had previously was uh, 2019, where we had over 430,000 cases. And then, of course, because of the pandemic, people weren't going out. It uh, dropped below 100,000 in 2020, maybe also because they weren't getting tested is the other thing. But it's slowly been creeping up uh, since uh, we started to open up. Uh, in 2023, I think we had about 200,000 cases. And for the first half of 2024, uh, we've seen about a 30% increase in cases, and we know that we're now in the rainy season, and so we expect to have even more cases. Um, and so I think it's on an upswing. We see maybe a five to seven year cycle. So we're about due uh, for um, a, a pretty high number of cases, maybe this year or in the next couple of years. And I'm sure all the healthcare systems in the country are gearing up for this possibility. But do you think we are doing enough to control dengue? Yeah, at this point, I think part of the problem is that we've kind of gotten complacent about dengue because it's it's almost become like a, a way of life because it's hyper endemic in the Philippines. Um, the transmission is all throughout the year. We we see cases even in the off months when when there's no rainy season, but then it gets really bad during rainy season, and it's a perennial problem. We see the hospitals have too many too many patients. Um, in terms of prevention, I think. It's very difficult because a lot of the things that make dengue uh, thrive uh, are actually situations that have poverty as a root. For instance, we know that standing water um, in jars, in pails, in storage containers is really where the mosquito breeds, uh, Aedes aegypti. And uh, the problem is that if there's no reliable water source uh, piped in water, then people are going to continue doing these things, even if they know that it actually puts their communities at risk. So I think that uh, it's important to let people know, educate them about how dengue is transmitted and how it breeds. But at the same time, I think there's a very important uh, impetus for government to make sure that people have alternatives in terms of storing their water and also having good sanitation and also being able to do the things that can prevent the vectors from breeding. So we are, we do have a lot of things that we need to do right now. Um, but with the WHO's target that by 2030, we'll have a 50% reduction in dengue cases and as well as zero deaths, what recommendations would be appropriate for the Philippines to achieve this main target? Yeah, certainly it can't be business as usual because as we know, the cycles are still very, very similar. The number of cases every year. Um, it is unfortunate that uh, the dengue vaccine, Dengvaxia, uh, was caught up in such a controversy because we know that about 90% of 10-year-old and above in the Philippines is seropositive. And we know that Dengvaxia protects against severe disease by more than 90% in that population. And because of the way that things unfolded, um, even though, of course, we are cognizant of the 
increased risk of severe dengue in patients who were zero negative who were inoculated that actually disenfranchised a much larger section of the population from being protected uh, for severe dengue by about 90 percent if we had been able to use this properly then it, the 50 percent reduction in deaths could be achievable um, because, um, as I said, it's 90% effective in decreasing severe dengue. And with a 90% zero positivity rate, then certainly, uh, if you do the numbers, 50% uh, is certainly very achievable. This is a very wonderful insight. Thank you very much. As a final message, uh, what do you want everyone to know? Well, I think the problem of dengue in, in the Philippines is really multifactorial, and this is not something that we can uh, we can solve overnight. But now we have two new dengue vaccines, even though uh, dengue vaccine uh, cases for uh, some of the proponents have actually been dropped. It doesn't sound like the uh, certificate for product registration is 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 going to go back. And dengue vaccine has also Sanofi has announced that they're actually closing the plants because of the decreased demand. But now that we have two others, the Takeda and the Butantan um, vaccines coming on board, we hope that if we are able to use these vaccines um, in a more sensitive and, you know, we have much better planning in, in, in letting these vaccines um, uh, uh, do their job, then maybe uh, we can slowly, gradually, start to push back against uh, dengue in our country, aside from the fact that we still have a lot to work in terms of social and behavioral uh, problems. But for me, um, I think that we're not going to achieve those goals without an effective dengue vaccine. And so I think it's very, very important for us to do this right this time. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. So I agree with you that we really need to have a united front uh, for everyone to make the effort uh, and help to control dengue. Um, and hopefully we can uh, have the data to really support and put out the, these dengue vaccines that are really be beneficial for all of us. Um, so thank you very much for your time. And we hope that everyone will take the key message and put out the effort. Thank you. Thanks for having me.